Hello, everyone. I'm Sean Fonello, and I'm really excited to show you some of the amazing work we have been doing at Perceptive I.O. And today, I'm going to talk about ultra stereo. So the estimation and stereo matching have been studied in our community at least for 30 years. And many of you would tell me that it's a solved problem. However, if you want a sensor capable of running a high frame rate and to be very accurate, and maybe running on a mobile platform, we realize that we are far to have a solved problem. And that's what ultra stereo is about. So we start from image uh, from a stereo pair and we remap every image patch into a compact representation. This mapping is learned once offline and is sparse, which means it's independent on the window size. Then we have a patch match like framework that computes distances in the new space and is able to infer the disparity. We also build an active stereo prototype capable of running at 215 FPS to show the system in action. Now, in comparison with uh, existing technologies, you can see that our system has limitations of Kinect V1, for example, which suffer from motion artifacts. So here the user is moving his hands in front of the scene of, this, of the camera. You can see that the, uh, the fingers get cut, whereas our sensor has this problem. Kinect V2 suffers from multipath, which deform objects such as this box. And again, Kinect V2 requires multiple shots in order to produce a single depth map. And again, it suffers from motion artifacts. Here we demonstrate a high-speed capture sequence of a user in front of the camera. You can see that the user is moving his hands really fast in front of it. And if we slow down the stream, you see how the system is capable of recovering train structures such as fingers, which is really important for high-level applications such as no rigid tracking or hand tracking, for instance. Now, to really evaluate the performances of the system, we had to build also a fully synthetic pipeline. We started from a 3D model, and then we placed virtual stereo cameras in the scene. These allow us to synthesize IR images together with an active pattern illuminator, as well as ground truth disparity maps. Thanks to these, we can compute not just standard metrics, such as depth bias and jitter, but also more sophisticated measurements to evaluate the depth algorithm, such as edge fattening and invalidation scores. And here you can see how ultra stereo outperforms the other competitors. We're also able to synthesize no rigid objects such as hands. They could be useful for tracking application. And here Ultra Stereo performs better compared to state of the art, not just in terms of depth accuracy, but also in terms of edge fattening and invalidation. Also, Ultra Stereo doesn't suffer from interference, which is a problem of having multiple illuminators in the scene. And previous work such as HyperDepth couldn't cope well with this. Whereas Ultra Stereo just requires multiple illuminator patterns to be in the scene, it actually will leverage that. Now we show some results on high-level applications such as static neck fusion at 30 FPS versus 210 FPS. At 30 FPS, you can see that the system is able of, of tracking up to a certain point. Due to large frame-to-frame -frame motion, at a certain point, it will start to hallucinate surfaces, and it will just lose the tracking. 210 FPS instead is much more robust, and we don't even need sophisticated bundle adjustment techniques or relocalization methods. It just works. But we don't want to stop here. We want to actually show more harder problems, such as no rigid reconstruction. Here we have an example where we run our dynamic fusion re-implementation on a 30 FPS problem and a 100 FPS sequence. You can see how the model 30 FPS will just stop tracking. It's actually pretty funny, I would say. And eventually will stop. A 100 FPS instead is really robust. Here we have the same demonstration live. So with very orchestrated movements, the system is actually able to track. But as soon as you start to move fast, it will just break. Whereas 210 FPS, we don't have such a problem. So if you want to know more about this work and other cool work you have been doing at Perceptive.io, please come and see our poster. Thank you.